Hey everybody. Um, first off, I want to let y'all know that I am doing better. Um, I feel pretty good actually, except I still have a lot of tiredness and I can't do a whole lot and I get worn out and uh, my hips still hurt a little bit. But otherwise, I'm doing great and um, thank you for all the prayers and kind words and all that you have sent, you know that that is good medicine and um, I just really appreciate it. So today, uh, I wanted to share with you some tips and hacks for your kitchen. And these are tips and hacks that I personally use and that I really like and uh, I think I only thought up one of them, and it may already be in existence anyway, but um, there's some really smart people that thought uh, some of this stuff up, and I just wanted to share it with you to maybe make your life a little bit easier like it's made mine. So the first thing I wanna show you is this Dawn Power Wash. Now this is some really good um, stuff to put on your dishes if you have uh, dried on um, stuff, you know, food and stuff like that. But it can get expensive and you know, I'm all about being frugal and uh, trying to save where you can. So uh, I found a recipe for the power wash and so i thought i would share it with you so you can try making your own so if, if you really need this spray that uh, puts out foam so if you don't have one you might need to buy the first bottle of this so that you'll have this uh, foaming bottle then after that you can use the homemade liquid or homemade Phone. But in it, um, I was looking at my recipe. It's 16 ounces, and in the bottom, you put about an inch of Dawn dishwashing liquid. Uh, that would be about a fourth of a cup, and so if you need to measure it, just do a fourth of a cup and put it in first. And then next you would put a tablespoon of alcohol and just put it in next and then very slowly add the water up to, you know, about right there. And if you put the water in fast, it's gonna bubble everywhere. So very slowly, just put your water in. If you can hold the bottle kind of sideways and let it hit the side and roll down, it'll help it not bubble as much, if that made sense. But anyway, that is your recipe for homemade Dawn uh, Power Wash. And uh, I really like it. And then the next thing is, now y'all may have heard some of these, but hopefully at least a few, a few of you have not heard about them and can get uh, uh, you know, sometimes my thinker quits working. Uh, you can get some use out of some of these tips. The next thing is take a dish towel, just a regular dish towel and when you wash your dishes in the dishwasher and they're finished, open your dishwasher, take your towel, your dish towel, and hang it over your dishwasher door uh, where part of it's on the inside and part's on the outside. I do a little extra towel on the inside and then shut your door back and leave it that way for, you know, 20 minutes or so and all that heat and steam and all that will go into your towel 
and it won't land on your dishes and make spots and your dishes will come out dry. So that's just a quick, easy little tip. You just have to remember to keep an eye on your dishwasher so you can catch it right after it uh, ends. Then, uh, I love this little hack. Okay, when you're measuring uh, honey or something like that, and you're putting it in a wet mixture, just spray your uh, teaspoon or tablespoon with um, Pam or one of the cooking sprays, and that helps the uh, honey or whatever you're using come out of your spoon easier. But if you're measuring something sticky or wet like honey or Cairo syrup or ketchup or anything wet and you're putting it in a dry mix so you don't have to clean your uh, spoon off maybe to go on to the next thing and measure it too, what you do is you take a little, um, well, I, I did this. Okay, here's your measuring spoon. And then you make a dent in your dry mixture. And that is the amount that's on this spoon. Then you You fill up that dent, and there you've got the same measurement as your spoon. So this was one teaspoon, and there you have one teaspoon. And just make your dent, pull it out. I'll do it one more time with the mustard. Do your teaspoon, and there you have it. Uh-oh. And I think this is a genius idea. So anyway, there is that. Um, I have to find, oh, okay. Here's another dishwashing tip. When, you're, uh, when you've loaded up your dishwasher, got your detergent in it, and you're ready to, um, to get it going to wash your load of dishes, take a strip of aluminum foil. This is about the size I do, and I wad it up. I don't wad it tightly. I wad it up loosely, and in the um, section where you put your silverware, um, I kind of stick it in one of those where it'll stick out part of the way and, uh, then just start my dishwasher going and this will help your dishes be shinier and cleaner and brighter and all that. And me and Randy swear by it because we think it just works wonderfully. And if you tried, I hope it does for you too, but we have really enjoyed this hack. If you can enjoy dishwashing hacks, we've enjoyed it. And, um, okay, this is the hack or whatever that I did. Uh, I made brownies for uh, church and my brownies always get too brown all the way around the edges. No matter if the center is perfect, the edges always are just hard and not very good. So I was using a nine by 13 pan. And so I thought about, you know, that when you make a pie in those little, uh, uh, like tin foil rings that go around the crust of the pie to keep them from burning. 
Well, I thought about that and thought um, I could make something like that to keep the edge of the brownies from burning and also it would work with cornbread or um, cobbler or anything you make that you put in a pan you just would need the right um, one of these pans you know if you needed a circle or a smaller one or whatever to go with it but all you do is cut a hole out that is pretty well maybe an inch or an inch and a half smaller than your casserole dish so that you put your casserole dish in the oven and then you put this on upside down and it's got you know a, a little bit of room from the top of it to the top of your casserole dish but that's okay when i made this and used it my brownies turned out wonderful the edges were great it wasn't discolored where this was it was perfect and um if you like i said if you use like a pie plate or something just you can go to dollar tree and buy the circle ones and i just poke a hole in the middle and then take the scissors or a knife and bring it out as far as i'm gonna want my uh edge to be and then i turn the flaps up and then i take the scissors and cut them off and if you try to pull the flaps through this side, you won't be able to, to cut them very well because of that. So bring anything you want to cut off to the bottom half and cut it off. And I hope I've explained that well. I don't feel like I explained it very good. But just be sure and leave about an inch, an inch and a half. It's fine if this is um, taller than your casserole dish. It still does a great job, and um, that's really all I can think of. I was very happy with this little contraption, and, and so I hope that you understood. And now the last thing I want to do is give you a recipe. It's for ground, uh, brown gravy mix the powdered mix uh it's simple uh if you don't have a pen with you right now you can maybe come back and get the recipe later but i use this recipe and it's really tasty and good and we really like it and if you are making a dish and you wish you had some gravy to go over your potatoes and rice but uh you don't you can just uh Take four tablespoons of this recipe I'm getting ready to give you, put it in a cup of water, put it on the stove and heat it up and stir it until it thickens. And you'll have some real good brown gravy. So uh, here's a recipe. You need three fourths of a cup of flour, three tablespoons of beef bouillon. That's the, um, the kind that uh, is powdered, not the little square things. Uh, two tablespoons of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of pepper, and one teaspoon of dry parsley. And so I'll read that again to you real quick so you uh, can hear it one more time. It's three-fourths a cup of flour, three tablespoons of beef uh, bouillon, two tablespoons of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of pepper, and one teaspoon of dry parsley. And you mix that all up together and put it in an airtight container you can put it in your refrigerator, freezer, or just leave it on your countertop, whatever 
you want to do will be just fine. And so th those are some of the tips that I've uh, collected over time. And I want to do this again with more tips, but I don't want to give you just any old tips. I want to give you tips that I've tried and that I think are good and work. So, um, uh, please be on the lookout for that. And I'm going to try to be back cooking maybe before too much longer. But for the time being, I'm just um, taking it easy and recuperating. And uh, things like this where I just sit here and tell you things is uh, no problem at all. And again, thank you for all the prayers, the cards and letters and um, well wishes. Um, you just never know when you're under the weather how much something like that means to know somebody cares and, and cares about you that much to take the time to do that for you. I just feel really blessed. And as I said in my other video, I have every card and letter that y'all have sent, and one day I would like to make some sort of uh, DIY something and use those cards. I want to use all of them. I, I don't want to pick out a few. I want to use them all in that, so I'm going to have to figure out what to do, but uh, they really have blessed my heart, and just thank you for all that y'all have done for me. It, it's, uh, it's just amazing. And so uh, y'all know the thing that is so deep within my heart is to be kind. Do something kind for somebody. Even if they look like they're on top of the world, doing something kind for them may be just what they need. And uh, it'll bless you and it'll sure bless them. And take care and hopefully I will see you soon. Bye-bye.